All right, I think we're live. Yeah, sounds good. All right, um, you know, I figured that I got the other section done and that the responsive web design principles are just, it's such a small section. And even though it's a little bit late, I might as well just get it done. Um, it shouldn't take too long and it'll be a really quick stream. Uh, I want to just walk you through that real quick as well as uh, everything else that I've been walking you through. So if it's your first time here, I have a whole series that I'm doing on the free code camp curriculum and I'm walking through the whole web design certification and I will be moving through all of the challenges that are here. I'm also going to be doing the projects later on. Uh, once I complete everything that you see on the screen, I did a lot of free code camp when I was learning how to code and I thought it'd be pretty cool now, you know, after, having experience and whatnot to come back and wipe my whole, uh, you know, accomplishments off of uh, free code camp and start over and do it with the viewers. Originally I was recording these and trying to make them kind of like they were live. And I figured why not just make them live, right? It, uh, it'd be more fun to watch me actually struggle through some of the stuff if I do get stuck and it'll help you with just seeing how this stuff is done. So with that said, I'm just gonna kind of read through the stuff and complete the challenges. This video is probably gonna be pretty quick uh, unless I get stuck on something, which I don't think I will, but you never know, I might. So let's see what the first part of the responsive web design challenges are. So let's see, today there are many types of devices that can access the web. They range from large desktop computers to small mobile phones. These devices have different screen sizes, resolutions, and processing power. Responsive web design is an approach in designing web content that responds to the constraints of different devices. The page structure and CSS rules should be flexible to accommodate these differences. In general, design, in general, design the pages CSS to the target audience. If you expect most of your traffic to be from mobile users, take a mobile first approach. Honestly, I think you should always take a mobile first approach because unless you're building a desktop application, then you should just, you know, think that everybody's gonna use your stuff on a phone because a lot of users are using phones these days and it seems to be, more standard than people using desktops and tablets. Uh, so, and then add conditional rules for larger screens for visitors on uh, the, uh, for visitors are on desktop. Uh, then design for larger screens with conditional rules for smaller screens. Uh, CSS gives you the tools to write different styles and then apply them depending on the device displaying the page. This section will cover the basic of CSS for responsive web design. So they're just gonna, this is gonna be really just media queries and whatnot. So I, it's, it seems pretty short. So let's let's check it out. Uh, what's what's going on, Fartoon uh, from Texas uh, and Cosmo, Cosmo that from uh, Fingers Crossed. Why are your fingers crossed? What's what's your are you, are you hoping that I mess up? Is that why your fingers are crossed? You wanna, you wanna see me mess up? I don't know. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. So create a media query. We're gonna create a media, media, I can't talk. It's midnight and I'm tired and I probably should have saved this video for another time, but I felt like I just got done with the last stream. I might as well knock this out because it's only four challenges. So let's see. Create a media query. Media queries are a new technique introduced in CSS3 that changed the presentation of content based on different viewport sizes. The viewport is a viewer's visible area of a web page and is different depending on the device used to access the site. Media queries consist of a media type, and if that media type matches the type of device, the document is displayed on, the styles are applied. You can have as many selectors and styles inside of your, your media query as you want. Here's an example of a media query that returns the content when the device width is less than or equal to 100 pixels. So <clears throat> you have your at media here, which uh, represents that it's a media query, and then your condition for that query, and then your opening and closing uh, curly brackets, which then you put your CSS 
in there, which they're representing with a comment here. And the following media query returns the content of a device that's height is more than or equal to 350 pixels. So then, so usually you'll see uh, min width, max width, and then you'll do you'll also see uh, min height, uh, max height as well for determining heights and, and whatnot for uh, the different viewports that they're trying to re represent. Uh, so then you have media again, then your condition, and then where your CSS would go in there. So remember the CSS inside the media query is applied only for the media types matching that device being used. So add a media query to so that the P tag has a font size of 10 pixels when the device height is less than or equal to 800 pixels. So then we're gonna. Uh, so then we're gonna do at media. And we're gonna do so. What is it? Mods uh, height is less than or equal to. So we're gonna do uh, max height. I think is what they're asking for there. Sorry, my mic's like in my way. I'm trying to type numbers because I can't I can't type numbers very well. And then we're gonna do that there. And then what is it? Your P tag. So we're gonna represent the P tag there. And then we're gonna say font size. Uh, type. What is it? Ten pixels. So that looks right. So we want it to be the max height. So the max is gonna be eight hundred pixels. And then we're gonna make the P tag 10, 10 pixels. So that should do it. Yep, there you go. All right, nice and easy. So there you have it, that's a media query. Um, again, I feel like this section should probably have been more challenges, but maybe they just wanna briefly cover it because they might go more into it with the flex box and the grid sections. I don't, I don't know if they will, but maybe they might. Uh, let's see, oh, I'm seeing someone who was in the last uh, stream. Uh, Diganta, uh, I believe I saw I saw you in the the previous stream that I just had going. So, just doing this one real quick, and this honestly is probably going to be um, a really short stream now that I look at it, since it's moving pretty pretty quickly. So let's see. All right, the next one is going to be making image responsive. Making images responsive with CSS is actually very simple. You just need to add these properties to an image. You give it a max width of 100% and then a height of auto. That really is a um, very, very common way to uh, make images responsive. So the max width of 100 will make sure that the image is never wider than the container that it's in and the height of auto will make the image keep its original aspect ratio. Add the styles rules to the responsive image class and make it responsive now. It should never be wider than its container. In this case, it's the preview window and it should keep its original aspect ratio after you've added to your code, resize the preview to see how your image behaves. All right, so basically this challenge is telling us to just do what's here and kind of copy and paste this. And if I copy and paste this, wait, so hold on. So add the styles rule to responsive image class. Okay, so it's up here and then the image width. So then a max height. So they want to, all right. So I guess I'm not getting rid of the max height. So then basically I am just gonna copy this right here and drop that right there. And that should be it. And it wants us to resize this to see, and you can see how it's the other one that doesn't have it, which is the one underneath here that doesn't have the responsive image um, class, doesn't resize nicely like the one that we added it to up here, which now looks good and looks like it's supposed to be the right the right height and whatnot there. And I am copying and pasting these things because I. I don't feel like there's a sense, I don't feel like there's a reason to type this stuff out. Um, but if you're new and you've never done this stuff and you and you feel like it will help you with muscle memory to type out these attributes and these CSS selectors and all of these different media queries to kind of get in the habit of doing it and maybe it'll help you remember, I get that. I mentioned that in the previous stream that I used to type everything out because I felt like it helped me like retain some of the stuff, but just know that you don't need to memorize any of this stuff. And that's something that I really, really want 
to emphasize. You don't need to memorize any of these tutorials. You just have to work through them and then Google everything when you go to build your own projects because that's pretty much the best way to learn. The tutorials are kind of to just get your feet wet and get you comfortable doing this stuff. So that should be that. We're gonna walk through it. Look at that, we're already 50% done. This is gonna be the fastest um, walk through ever. So let's see, all right, responsive design principles, use a retina display for higher resolution displays, or use a retina image, I'm sorry, for higher resolution displays. With the increase of inter internet connected devices, the, their sizes and spec specifications vary, and the displays they use could be different externally and internally. Pixel density is an aspect that could be different on one device from another, and its density is known as a pixel per inch, PPI, or dots per inch, DPI. The most famous such display is one known as retina di display on the latest Apple MacBook Pro notebooks and recently iMac computers. Due to the difference in pixel density between retina and non-retina displays, some images that have not been made with high resolution displays in mind could look pixelated when rendered on high resolution displays. So the, uh, the simplest way to make your image properly appear on high resolution displays, such as a MacBook Pro, you retinas display to define their width and height and values as only half of what its original file is example, the image only half of the original height and width. All right, so. So it's kind of funny because I, uh, this is something that I haven't really done before, or paid much attention to before. So this is actually something I'm kind of, kind of learning on on the app that I work on regularly at work. I don't, I don't, I don't do this, and I don't know if we did this at my previous job. But let's see. So set the width and height of the image uh, to half of the original values. In this case, both the original height and the original width are 200 pixels. So basically it wants us to set this image to 100 pixels height and 100 pixels width. So we're gonna go into the styles here. We're gonna just target the image tag directly and we're gonna do IMG for image there. And then we're gonna do height is gonna be 100 pixels and then width is gonna be 100 pixels and that should that should do it. It looks like it shrunk that up real good and that's it. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be quick. It's funny, I, I think I got more, more viewers now than I did in the other stream, but this stream is gonna be like finished in no time. So I can pay a little more attention to the, uh, to the chat here. So let me let me finish this let me finish this last section here and then I'll answer whatever questions you have. Um, so it should just be another minute. So that way when when I upload this, it doesn't cut too far into people who might watch it as a as a re-recording. Uh, so let's see, the last one should be make type make typography responsive. Instead of using M or pixel size, you can use viewport units for responsive typography. Viewport units like percentages are relative units, but they are based off of different items. Viewport units are relative to the viewport dimensions, width or height of a device. And percentages are relative to the size of the parent container element. The four different viewpoint units are view height, uh, which is, which is um, uh, so it's, uh, it's w, VW for viewport width, and then that's 10 VW would be 10% of the viewport width, then v, VH for viewport height, and then the minimum, which is V min, and then the max, which is V max, and then in the example that sets the body tag to 30% of the viewport's width, the body would be 30 uh, v, VW, which, uh, let's see what it wants us to do. Set the width of the H2 to 80% of the viewport's width and the width of the paragraph to 75% of the viewports uh, on smaller dimension. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. We're gonna do H2 and then what are we gonna do here? So it wants 80% on this. So we're gonna do, what is this, view width? Oh, wait, sorry. We're gonna do uh, on the width, so. 
view width and what was it? 80%. So I'm gonna do 80 view width. And then what did it want on the other one for the, it was for the paragraph tag. Oh, geez, I'm all over the place. So then we're gonna do a P tag here. And what are we gonna do for the width there? 75, so. Again, I can't type numbers without looking, or, or, or uh, it, it's hard for me to type numbers without looking. So I got to kind of like look past my my, uh, my mic, and it's kind of hard to see the numbers. So that should cover that. Um, as you can see, it changed the sizes there. If I comment this stuff out, you'll see that it changed that. And then there you go. So oh, oh, geez. I need to read this stuff better. All right, that's it. That's all she wrote. Uh, it looks like the next challenges, which I won't be doing in this video because I am definitely too tired to uh, to start these, but I know that it's sections that a lot of people uh, kind of struggle with sometimes. I know Flexbox and Grid were pretty confusing for me when I first got started and was learning how to code. So I'll be covering those in the next set of videos and I'm gonna try to stream them as well. Hopefully I don't get stuck too much on any of them and we sit here for hours trying to figure something out. I'll probably end up Googling and you'll see how a developer figures stuff out in the real world by Googling everything. <laughs> All right, if you enjoyed this stream, if it was helpful, if you're doing the free code camp curriculum and you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. Make sure to like this video, it'll help me out. And thanks for watching.